Welcome back, everyone, to the 3v3 Renegade Tournament Recap. I remain your host, Dominic, and we have the Round 3 match. Team GBC versus Team 400 on Red Comet. This should be interesting, because Red Comet, I'd say, is a really good 3v3 map overall. It's a map that just has the right positioning for three setups. And I always talk about how there's kind of two major start points for 1v1. At least you have the area here that we have Manu in with their Hovercraft Factory. They have 400 over in the top, which is where people commonly go as a safe setup. And then the tree cheese setup where Rav is over in the south. And it's it's radially symmetric, so same thing. Southwest and is safe. South northwest where Fred is is kind of cheesy. And Harvey is in the more the, the kind of middle position. But now of course it's 3v3, so there isn't so much cheese as it's just an expectation that your opponents are gonna be taking all three major start locations at once. Anyway, Fred going for tanks, Harvey going for cloaky, and Astran going for tanks as whoa, double tank. Interesting. I mean, Cyclopses are really good, but you generally don't need to have multiple factors of the same type. Anyway, Cloaky for... Cloaky for 400, for Manu already mentioned, went for Hovercraft, and Rav going for tanks. See, I don't know. I mean, going for multiple factories, the one advantage of that is that you are having things set up at different locations. So it's a little bit easier to just get forces where you need them, especially slow forces like tanks. But generally speaking, you want to build factors for variety, not for building the same units multiple times over. At any rate, fairly even. Getting first little bit of scouting out the daggers, managing to find information, not really managing to find a whole lot of value. While at the same time, Kodachi's is coming in here from Rav, finding a lot of val- Sorry, not from Rav. My bad, from Astran. Rav trying to defend desperately. Astran is the one finding value, getting rid of a couple metal- or Getting rid of, well, a Kodachi. Damaging the factory affair, but getting rid of the metal extractor. And at the same time, the daggers coming in here didn't really manage to do all that much. So Astran having a great time here. The Kodachis. Oh, yeah, right, they do auto repair, so that does help. And of course, the fact that it is the one retreating means that Astran's Kodachi is going to have an advantage, but now the warrior com or the Beaver coming in here, that should put a stop to it. Astran's Kodachi has nowhere to run. Trades a Kodachi for a Kodachi, but unfortunately only able to get rid of one metal extractor in the process. But at the same time, does potentially open things up for the Glaze. Manu's commander, however, is right there to stop it. And Rav, right on the ready for the reclaim. I like to see that. However, at the same time, that did leave some room for expansion coming in from Team GBC. Especially in the southwest side of the map. But Mace Rush, this is what Ra this is what we unlucky wanted to do last game. Push the mace right, right at the very beginning of the game, and I think Red Comet's a much better map to make that work in than Comet Catcher. Or not Comet Catcher, than Ravage. Comet Catcher was the weird commander thing, but even then, nice Imp coming in here, stopping the mace in its tracks. No real arm done. At the same time, Rav coming in with a follow of Kodachi should be able to get rid of a couple metal extractors in the process, and as a result, but a slight advantage in favor of Team 400 for their metal. But, still... Team 400 isn't that far ahead yet. They are expanding consistently. They're managing to get their forces in reasonably solid positions. They do have a nice imp here as well, which won't be enough to stop the Minotaur. They'll need to if they want to paralyze the Minotaur. But they have the maces. They have upgraded commander. No, unupgraded commander. That Minotaur is going to have a field day now. <laughs> oh, trying to dig the pit traps. I like the idea. And it's, at the very least, the tip. Oh, nice, nice imp use. Stopping the support glaives. Doesn't manage to get the Minotaur much, but stopping the support glaives is still fairly important. That gives Manu a fair amount of time to repair that mace. Possibly enough time to get her and start tearing apart the glaives before they get built up. At the very least, get this Reaver in place to get rid of all the glaives. That works fine. That was the important thing. That Imp bought the time needed for Team 400 to defend effectively. Team GBC still expanding quite a bit and still trying to fend off a few small bits of harassment. This one glaive here is actually doing quite a number. Same time, Glaze over on the south side. Should be able to get rid of a welder. That is going to be huge. Yes, it does get rid of the welders. So the entire south side. Rav does have the expansion there, but it's not going to be rebuilt anytime soon as it's being destroyed. While at the same time, the attempt here for Cloaky for the Glaive to get rid of all these metal extractors does get stopped short. Still, it is keeping Team GBC from expanding as quickly. And they are taking constant damage. They are managing to trade reasonably well. But still, there's only so much it can do. At this point, I'd say Team 400, they've definitely gotten the most value out of this. They have the economic advantage. They've managed to keep their expansion going while rebuilding. 
and Team GBC on the other hand, not so much. I mean, they're just having a bit of a hard time really dealing with this. But at the same time, that ogre is possibly going to turn things around. Or at the very least, open things up to turn things around. The north side has basically no defenses. The pickets are being set up to try to stop anything. And that's not a bad idea for the time being. But the Minotaur can just walk in there once it gets repaired. And then it won't really have to worry about anything. I mean, the pickets won't be a threat. It'll actually end up overkilling them, mostly. On the other hand, the south side of the map is where we could see bigger problems. The hovercraft forces coming around the side. Again, a lot of pickets to deal with. I don't think they're so concerned. I mean, they can just go straight under the pickets and get into the base and just destroy stuff there. Get rid of all the wind generators. Wipe out the power. And that's one thing Team GBC already doesn't have enough of is power. They only have so much energy and mostly just because the wind generators have decided to be not spinning at all. So granted, the wind generators dying wouldn't be a huge deal, but it would preserve the situation they're in now where they are behind on energy and as a result as a result can't really build up too much and now that leaves team 400 able to push in with a ronin they're not going to push in too far though that they need to pull back and that's exactly what they're doing because otherwise the minotaur and ogre will destroy them and at the same time there's that ogre there's this coming around the side doing exactly what i thought it would do i'm a bit surprised the kodachis did not follow suit but hey nice nice bit of safe attack here should be able to find some value around here. Get rid of the Kodachi. Maybe get rid of one of the Lotuses. Mosley needs to get rid of the wind generators. If it can't get rid of the wind generators or the metal extractors, mostly the wind generators, then it will have achieved nothing. And at this point, it is managing to get rid of the welder. Also a really good thing to get rid of. I always say, if you can get rid of a worker, get rid of a worker. But at this point, getting rid of the power infrastructure is just as good, considering the situation that Team GBC is in right now. Same time over to the north side of the map. A bit of a skirmish going on with the Ronin. Team GBC managing to push them back, but even then, it's just going to push them back into a massive wall of pickets, so the Glaives can't really do much. And at the same time, though, this is it. 400 coming in. Or not 400. That was Manu. Manu coming in here with the maces, with the big push. Should be able to get rid of Harvey's forces. At the same time, the Ogre, while it does go down, did get rid of half of the power infrastructure. But Harvey has lost everything. Three maces coming in here. Should be able to rip apart whatever's left. Destroy the commander. Maybe destroy everything else in the back line, honestly. This is a huge blow. This is probably going to be giving 14400 the win. I don't see any way they could really get out of here other than maybe getting a Cyclops. They do not do not have that available. The Ogre is up. That's going to be of some use. But even then, it's just between the Ronin and the Mace. And the fact that no Cyclops has been built up. The Minotaurs are coming up, and that's not a bad idea. But, again, this is when Cyclops is still broken. And at this point, Rav, they have a Cyclops on cue, but neither Estran nor Fred are even looking to plan to build Cyclops. They're just going for the Minotaur Ogre strategy, which, again, kind of a safe strategy, and it does ultimately defend the base. But it's only going to go so far. Especially once that Cyclops does get built up. It's going to take a little while, but Rav is going for it. Should be in about two minutes that they get that Cyclops. And even as it is, it's still a massive economic advantage in favor of Team 400 as a result of that one assault. I mean, got rid of about half the metal that the Western team, that Team GBC, had to their name. And while Team GBC does have the defensive forces that could go for a reasonably effective counterattack, again, they only have about a two-minute window. And if they can't effectively get in in that time, they don't have a lot of options. And with the, pennant, with the Lance, rather, up already, I'm not sure how many options they do have. That's essentially the exact counter to the Minotaurs that's needed. So at this point, Harvey, again, they've lost basically everything. So there is this giant open space in the middle that could be rebuilt. Honestly, that's the other thing that needs to be done. If that gets rebuilt, there is a good shot for Team GBC to at least hold the line somewhat. I mean, they have quite a few Minotaurs coming up, actually. Between the Minotaurs and the Ogres, yeah, they got a reasonably good position here. 4,000 metal worth of units. They can get through the Lance. I mean, that would be a bit tougher. The, the Ronin aren't a bad choice for that. But again, as mentioned before, Halberds. This is what Halberds excel at, getting into skirmisher range. Not worrying about the skirmishers themselves and then destroying the skirmishers. This is, this is why I wanted to see Halberd's last game. Is exactly what's happening right now. Because, yeah, the Ronin stand no chance. Then the Halberds can just push in from there, get into the base, destroy Astran's Lotuses, destroy Astran's factory, destroy the entire energy infrastructure. And I'm not really sure what they're thinking at this point. Right now, Fred is basically being the last line of defense. They do have a Cyclops being built up, but it's going to take about three minutes... And I'm not sure that's going to be enough time. The Cyclops coming up for Rav is already on the way. It's only got about a minute or so left, I would think. A minute and 20 seconds. As opposed to... Ooh, 45 seconds. Never mind. Everything has been pushed in here. T 
Team GBC is focusing all of their resources onto this one Cyclops, hoping for the best that they can keep them in the game, and maybe it can. They were pretty broken at this point, so it might be an option. But, I don't know. I mean, the problem, they're gradually running out of resources. They have very little metal left. These Glaives are doing a number on whatever metal is left. And yeah, that Cyclops, that can't be up in time. I mean, the Ogre's trying. It really is, but it can't hit the Glaives for some reason, actually. That's kind of weird. Why can't it hit the Glaives? That's the job of the Ogre is to hit the Glaives and kill them. Okay, there we go. Some justice here. But even then, there's only one Metal Extractor left. It's being overdriven almost double, but yeah, it's not going to be enough. There needs to be two or three more Metal Extractors if this has any hope of being built. If this Cyclops has any chance to be built in a reasonable amount of time. This Metal Extractor cannot die, and it just did die. I mean, at least there's some reclaim. That is the one thing that could help for the time being. But even then, just look at the sheer amount of territory taken up by Team 400. I mean, Team GBC... They had a reasonably good position, but unfortunately, they didn't really have a whole lot to push with. While Team 400, they got those maces. They followed up the Ogre attack with the maces. They were constantly keeping their eye on the prize as far as destroying their opponent's base. And that paid off. At this point, they should be able to destroy the tank factory before the before this Cyclops is even close to being complete. Especially with the Glaives coming in here. I mean, GBC, they tried. They really did, but that is it. That is game, and that's... Kind of why I was really surprised they went for two factories of the same factory. Or two of the same factory at the same time. But really, it was just those three maces. That was the big thing. We saw exactly what Unlucky wanted to do last game pan out this game. The maces came in, and the halberds came in afterwards to counter the skirmishers used to counter the maces. And the ogre came in beforehand to steal a little bit of damage. On top of that, GBC did run out of energy pretty quickly. Like, their energy flatlined, largely because their wind generators were just doing nothing because wet red comet doesn't have particularly good wind wind generators like red comet's wind generators red comet's wind generators are 0.1 at bottom and go up to like 0.3 at the very 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 best it's like 0.3 it's not worth building wind generators on this map there's such a huge gamble and that gamble didn't pay off so that was another big blow for team gbc and that's why they're metal flatlined and the metal flatline because their energy flatline, their energy flatline because they had wind generators, and the wind generators did not produce any energy for a long time. And then got broken. So then they couldn't produce any energy ever again. Oh, that's oh steel. Okay, so that's what the ogre was doing. Sorry, back here, the ogre was trying to hit with the edge of the area of effect. Didn't quite notice it was a targeting ground at the time. That makes sense. But it didn't work. So that's round three. And, again, that was... So that was 400 Raven Manu getting another point. At this point, they had about... Th yeah, they had two points by now. So they've been running reasonably ahead. And at the same time, though, Team Mumble also with two points. Like, 2-1 Team Mumble, 2-1 Team 400. The team... What team is Silver Gun here? Can't remember which team that is. Silver Gun is CD Devils Ninja. That we haven't seen any of it. I don't think they ended up playing next round either, actually. I think there were no-shows. And then Dive Thorn Team Pluck ended up winning again. I think Team Pluck is actually... Yeah, they're running 3-0 at this point in the tournament. So Team Pluck is the current in is currently in the lead. Team 400 and Team Team Mumble currently just trying... Like, they're currently both 2-1. And Team XCOM... I believe they're also 2-1, actually. Yep, they are also 2-1. So next round, which one did I have here? I think it was the one with Team XCOM. Let's see. No, it was the other one. It was Team Venom versus Team Mumble. So that is... Interesting, because I can't remember... Team Venom? Yeah, it's over here. Team Venom didn't... Oh, okay, so this, this bracket is a little bit off, because Team Venom actually didn't end up fighting the team that's up against. They ended up fighting against Team Mumble instead of Team FFC, due to some drops midway through the tournament. Alright, that's a little weird. Apparently that's what happened, at least. Or, wait, no, what? Oh, sorry, my bad. This is... 
What what's going on here? Oh, sorry, that was last round. It was yeah, that's not what's next. What's next is going to be I want to say team team mumble and team pluck. So I want to see if team mumble decided to go for that approach again. Like the the multi commander approach. And that's going to be on into battle. So sorry about that. Completely went off off the rails there for a second. Ignore what I said for the last few minutes. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be match 20. Team Pluck versus Team Team Mumble. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple seconds. <laughs> 